How are That's you? That's okay. I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Good. Little bit, you know, distracted these days. I don't know. Maybe it's the change of weather. It's just like so um, quick to switch from uh, summer to autumn. It's just like very, very quick. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, where did the summer go? <laughs> oh yeah that's that's kind of sad but yeah but I love uh, autumn too I think it's it's beautiful <laughs> yeah is it uh, already cold where you live right now uh it's always summer here <laughs> really? yeah it's only rainy or sunny <laughs> okay okay for you <laughs> <laughs> okay um we already started but for uh, the listeners i would just uh, like for you to introduce yourself and also for me because i meet you for the first time uh where you're from what you do and uh, yeah that's basically it okay hi uh nikki my name is salsa villa nadif and you can call me salsa i am a a multi-passionate entrepreneur and also artist Mm -hmm. i am based in yeah. And right now I run four companies, which are beauty skincare brand mm-hmm. and then a clothing line and then a mental health platform and also a painting exhibition. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Like how? Okay. Let's, let's first. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to start with uh, four businesses? like to open for businesses did it happen sequentially or did it happen all at once how it all started okay so it actually happened sequentially mm-hmm. uh so i i was actually a medical student back then mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and then but you know when you're asian your parents wanted you to be a doctor or engineer or lawyer and uh i follow them so but actually my passion is has always been art okay. and holistic Mm-hmm. and then, um, I feel like after I graduated my bachelor of medicine mm-hmm. I feel like it's not my passion and I have a mental health issue also like anxiety and depression mm-hmm. so actually what started my company is when my lowest point uh, I feel like uh, I needed to get out of this um, unhealthy mental state mm-hmm. and at that uh, my psychologist told me that uh, why don't you st- try uh, art therapy because art therapy is quite useful when you cannot uh, communicate something through talking oh, uh, yeah. and then okay. my uh, my therapist was uh, in another city mm-hmm. and she cannot, uh, she cannot help me to do the therapy itself okay so I think to myself uh, when I was a child, I loved to paint so much. But when I grow up, why why don't I embrace that side of creativity in me? And I mm-hmm. feel like uh, at that time, I feel like, oh, I think this is a path for me to embrace that art and that passion within me. So I started to draw mm-hmm. and also paint. But when I paint, uh, the painting is abstract. And I feel like oh this is very like different and I wonder if people like it or not and I feel like I'm afraid to be judged or Mm -hmm. being criticized for that of course but there's a voice in my head that says um just try to post it and on social media you never know how Mm -hmm. people would that and people's reaction were like oh my god that's so cool uh that's so beautiful how did you do that and Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, some people ask me to make a shirt for them and then uh, also teach uh, therapeutic art through uh, painting and also mm-hmm. making images. And at, so from that, I then make a platform for that and also a clothing line. And then for beauty, I actually uh, started it because I feel like skincare is very powerful for us and it uh helps us to connect with ourselves and loving mm-hmm. ourselves yeah so that's the story <laughs> wow it's it's like a whole journey like all connected yeah. together <laughs> and I can see the pattern for sure and it's interesting how it starts within you but then when you started publishing and posting online other people connect to it and you also started to teach what you have experienced which is really nice and I believe that's how um 
most entrepreneurs start right they they start listening to that positive voice in their head and then they're like okay let me just give it a go and let's see what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. very fascinating what i had also in, in mind was how easy it is to start business in your environment where did you say you're based right now i'm actually in indonesia indonesia so okay. it's actually not really easy here because people are not accustomed to become an entrepreneur here mm -hmm. people are inclined to be uh, an employee or a civil servant where it is more there are more security and stability in that mm -hmm. doctors like, lawyers yeah lawyers yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like it's, it's quite a challenge and in my family even in the big family there are mm -hmm. no business uh, person and I feel like uh it's it's it kind of hard you? <laughs> it started yeah. with you to uh, pow pay, like pave the way for someone who wants to start something of their own which is amazing thank you yeah it started with me <laughs> that's great so you don't, didn't have anybody around you to show you the way or to ask questions or to uh, be like okay I need a business advice how can I do that uh, yeah, I have nobody for that. So mm -hmm. I went on, I searched online for that, for mentorship, mm -hmm. for a competence, business competition. And then after that, from that, I reach out to those who are in entrepreneurship. And I think I got uh, networking cool people from there. And yeah. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Amazing. So would you say that uh, networking is easy for you? Like uh, you have anxiety, but are you extroverted or more introverted? Like how do you go out of your home and stop doing art and skincare and go and meet people, strangers? So I'm actually more of an introverted person, mm -hmm. so, but <laughs> because I'm in entrepreneurship, I have to become more of an extrovert. Yeah. And sometimes it is quite draining. Mm -hmm. And but I like to connect with people on a deeper level. So I think I see uh, networking as a, a way to connect with people and to exchange ideas. Mm -hmm. So that that way I am not really quite drained. So yeah. Okay, so so when you go out, you go with a purpose, and when you come back, you just recharge. Okay, that's true. Yes, I see, I see. And you said business competitions. I'm not following the script now because the conversation yeah, yeah, that's is okay. flowing. Yeah, um, like, yeah. Tell me more about those business competitions. What was the first one? How does it look like? And if someone in Indonesia is kind of motivated by this conversation we're having, how they can start? opening at least one business <laughs> okay <laughs> so the first um business competition that i uh went to is angel and founders mm -hmm. uh, where it connects angel investors and also uh, startups mm -hmm. and, and it is uh held in bali so it was very fun Ooh. i get to travel to bali to go to a business competition and mm -hmm. it was my first so i think it was it was a pretty great experience mm -hmm. uh however i didn't i didn't win it uh but i learned a lot and it uh, teaches me that i need to work on my branding on my marketing and mm -hmm. uh, the way i also found more mentors from there mm -hmm. and yeah it's, it's an amazing experience and for uh the if there is someone that wanted my advice on building a business mm -hmm. first um, hone that voice in your head or in your heart and follow that voice uh day by day so mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. we feel like um business is something like oh an aha moment like oh i want to build this and this will be a million dollar business mm -hmm. but i think it's are like small steps day by day that you follow your heart follow your intuition and I think it's also an exercise mm -hmm. because sometimes we think that oh I'm not creative I cannot be a business owner oh I'm not a problem sol solver mm -hmm. I'm not uh, I'm not like Steve Jobs or something like that but it's actually a, a skill that we can actually hone our creative and artistic skill every day in business skills right yeah what, what I had so many questions related to that. <laughs> okay, it basically you would say to them to start uh, step by step and to try something and then work on it and continue it into a habit as an exercise. Yes. That's great advice. 
Did you fund your travel to Bali by yourself? Uh, was it expensive? Did you have to send anything before you went there? How does business competition work? Because I never heard about one before. Okay, so for the travel expenses, I paid mm -hmm. it by myself in mm -hmm. Bali. Mm -hmm. But I actually was also invited to another business convention in mm -hmm. Bali also, but I cannot make it, but it okay. was paid for that. Mm -hmm. So, but but I cannot because it it, uh, it crashes with my other schedule. Yeah. So there are businesses, a uh, business competition that are being paid or mm -hmm. sometimes we paid it by ourselves. Mm hmm Sometimes uh, when I first uh, do the Angels and Founders competition, yeah. uh, the judges were like, oh, you're from, uh, my con my city was Surabaya. And they were like, oh, you're from Surabaya? Uh, it's very far and it must be uh, uh, tiring to go here. And they were like very, very intrigued by that. And mm -hmm. they appreciate it very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. That's that sounds very interesting. Would you say that um okay, you said the environment in Indonesia is not very um entrepreneurial and friendly, but did you find a community or maybe uh like-minded people not only in Indonesia but online that are also Indonesian or something virtual or physical? Yeah, uh, I find uh so there is this business course uh community mm -hmm. that as the foundation of business and also mm. how to start a business and marketing, branding, uh, market segmentation. Mm -hmm. It's called Seven Planner and it, it helps me connect with like-minded people and also entrepreneurs around Indonesia. And that's very helpful. Oh, nice. So it's already based in Indonesia and creates that networking pool for you guys to connect. Yes. Oh, that's, that's nice. So we can leave a link probably in the description later for everybody else yeah. to check it out. That's amazing. Sure. What do you think are some qualities that you have that contribute to the success of all four businesses that you have? Like, what do you think makes okay. you a successful business owner? <laughs> so I think the first is empathy, because mm. I feel like when you're a business owner, you need to empathize with your customer. Mm. Uh, do they need that product how do they feel with the product and then next would be creativity mm -hmm. because I feel like we need to think out of the box to help our customer and to always innovate for our uh, products and the third would be problem solving mm -hmm. because we uh, are uh, creative with our problem solving skills then we can uh, be a market leader so we can always be uh, on ahead of our competitors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also being able to adjust when something new comes on and something you want to try and maybe your client comes with an idea and you're like oh let me look into this and create it probably so that's very uh i think the order is even good you said empathy the second one was creativity creativity and then the problem solving which is like how it it should be in my opinion as well when when it comes to uh, creating a new business because um for me starting my business is also coming from the idea that when I was working in a company, they didn't really care about the the end user or the client per se mm. and then I was like, okay, I really enjoyed listening to these problems, but I also want to act on those problems and offer something that is really useful for the client, not what is useful mm -hmm. only for the business. So I think I, and I hope that in the future, in 2025, more business owners will go into business with that kind of mindset and idea in mind that when they open a business, it's not because I can work from home, I can make more mm. money and yeah, yeah, yeah. I can play video games in the middle of the day or something like that. Yeah. Do you do you feel like there's some uh, new business owners and entrepreneurs that are entering either the creative circles or any other circles just because of the benefits that come with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, most people actually want fast money mm. and also... I think when you start business with that mindset, it would mm -hmm. not sustain because you don't do it from your heart, from your passion. Exactly. And when that happens, uh, your competitors will uh, 
go in and like uh, you will not have a stable foundation for your business yeah i agree i agree and what the other question about your businesses was where do you get all the energy for your work okay my what's energy. your secret <laughs> <laughs> my secret would be so I think I am very connected with my higher self like mm-hmm. my sp- I, I am very into spirituality mm-hmm. and sometimes I meditate and when I meditate I receive spiritual downloads like uh, what should I do for today and then some inspiration some creativity mm-hmm. hacks something like that and sometimes it happens like uh, there is uh, an object like let's say uh, when I close my eyes and then I meditate, I see a sunflower mm. and uh, I interpret it uh, with my own uh, interpretation. Like, let's say, oh, I need to make a sunflower uh, painting or something that invite warmth and uh, closeness in my customer or something like mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. it always inspires me and gives me, like, I don't feel really alone when I'm, I'm in my entrepreneurial journey, when I connect with my higher self okay that's that's really fascinating do you have like a specific time of the day or do you create it as a ritual habit or is it like um how to say you go by your day and you're like okay now I need to sit down and go go through myself (laughs) yeah yeah so actually usually in the morning but Mm. also when I feel like uh I need it at the at the the moment so Mm -hmm. yeah it's a a combination between a ritual and also something that is impromptu okay uh, do you use any audio video or um how to say written do you need some input from from the outside for you to be guided or you just like really really try to do it isolated in by yourself i use uh to, saw some of the application mm-hmm. uh, which are only application it's like a spiritual application and also chat gpt it helps me a lot <laughs> really? tell me about yeah. that tell me about the application oh, yeah. chat GPT. Chat GPT, so usually i ask chat gpt to make a guided meditation so i i tell chat gpt about my vision about mm-hmm. my day about how i'm feeling and after that chat gpt can uh, make a personalized meditation routine mm-hmm. where you can also make it read it out loud yes. so you can like close your eyes and hear what ChatGPT says and you just uh, envision that and then you ground yourself and yeah it it's a very <laughs> fun exercise to do was it your thread that you posted about a uh, dream day in a life uh, with ChatGPT? i actually did it but i i i I forgot if I ever posted it in yeah. my story. Because <laughs> I saw it on threads and someone posted about that, how to use ChatGPT to create a day in a life. And they also put the prompt there and I started using it and it's really, really amazing. And it never crossed my mind that you can use ChatGPT for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so yeah i i also follow that that prompt to i guess <laughs> it it actually really helps you with with a lot of things <laughs> i think yeah in, i should create one for personal use and one for like only business side but okay. not to yeah, not yeah, to yeah. mix them together because yeah. when you think about it you can ask anything and everything and it's fascinating how you you just need that little push from someone else online to start and dig into a new topic. And yeah. what was the other app that you said that you're using? It's Moonly. And how does it look like? What, what does it do? Uh, so it helps you with uh, the moon moon faces. Mm-hmm. Like if it's full moon or new moon. And okay. then what are the energies of the universe at the time? And also uh, what are the planets that may be uh, conjunct or retrograde? Wow. And it helps you to know with that. And also there's a tarot, tarot card spread. Oh. So you can... Yeah, and then there's also, also rune, like symbols that you can help mm-hmm. that help you with what your day needs. And there's also meditation and mm-hmm. also other information. Yeah, for useful information. You wouldn't believe it, but I have next to my uh, bedside there uh-huh. one piece of paper with all the moon phases written by dates. Oh! 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me see what, what week I am, am right now, which phase it is, what I should focus on. And I like, just read it. I'm like, mm, okay, this period of time I should focus on being more goal driven and more risk taking. The other week is just like cleaning and taking out yeah. trash, mental, physical and everything. So it's fascinating how we all kind of have these similarities, like little yes. things. That's so cute. I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you do to uh, recharge when you feel drained or kind of tired or from work or being social t- interactions? Like what is your go-to way to recharge? Uh, I think first I have this perfume that has a special scent. I mm-hmm. made it by myself mm-hmm. and uh, it actually calms me down. And also I usually read a book and also watch my favorite TV shows. That's really comforting. That sounds really nice. Yeah. And how did you come up with the scent? What was the inspiration behind creating your own perfume? Okay, so uh, it actually titled labyrinth of the sea Mm -hmm. and and i always love the sea so much and how it connects with i am a pisces so it connects with my moon sign and stuff like that with your emotions (laughs) (laughs) intuition and stuff like that so i feel like when i uh, spray it i feel like i'm connected to myself Mm -hmm. and uh yeah and also i usually also paint a therapeutic painting Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do you swim as well? Uh rarely. I, I don't mm. really swim. <laughs> oh, you're not a real fish then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when is your birthday by the way? Uh it's uh from twenty uh it's in twenty three of February. Oh, okay. So you're not March, you're in February. Okay. okay. February, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you guess my sign? Uh cancer? Close, but no. <laughs> oh, oh, um, uh, Scorpio? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Leo, Leo, Leo. Oh, Leo. Oh, wow. Okay, but you're very soft because Leo is usually like very, very <laughs> fiery. Really? I'm soft? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, <You're> yeah. <laughs> like very Wait, feminine Leo's can be sorry uh, Leo's can be quite um someone once told me that I'm intimidating so we oh. I, I guess it depends on on the on the period of time the way we express ourselves and depending on the energy that we meet and yeah uh, yeah some some people can, cannot guess uh, who is a Leo, who is not, because it really depends also, like you said, like which like signs, like uh, the sun, moon and everything else, but also which part of the, um, the sign are you born, like in the beginning, middle or in, at the end. So everybody gets like little different portions of uh, the zodiac sign and characteristics. But that's interesting. That's I actually really like Pisces and they're really drawn to me. I don't know why. And ah! I'm so drawn to them. And it's like, really water fire combination that is like yeah. oh, not so like totally opposite but like so I don't know so complimentary. good Com- complimentary yes exactly that that's, <laughs> that's what I was looking for okay yeah. that's very chaotic but very interesting interview <laughs> I love it okay. <laughs> oh by the way how old are your businesses right now if we have to uh, give them ages uh two years two years all four of them yeah okay uh, no. uh, for the skincare it's uh, one year mm-hmm. and for the line it's two year for the mental health platform it's one and a half mm-hmm. and for the uh painting it's two years also okay pretty much a similar uh timeline for all of them yeah but can you uh, tell us what kind of challenges did you face in the beginning let's say the first year of each business maybe what was the most challenging for you so I think the most challenging is uh, I do art and uh, uh, particularly abstract art mm-hmm. and it is something that is uh, very open to interpretation mm-hmm. and here I think people are very conservative mm-hmm. and they would usually like what is this like what is the the image of this they wanted to see something they can see when mm-hmm. actually 
art is something that you interpret for, uh, by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what, what does it mean to you? Exactly. Not uh, what it means to the painter or what is actually exactly. the painting. Doesn't have so, description under the the visual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think to educate people about that and mm -hmm. to also like raise awareness about mental health is also quite a challenging thing for me mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I see. So maybe, um, if we have to summarize, getting across your message, would you say that's correct? Yes. Yes, that's true. How supportive is your family in your uh, endeavors in, in terms of business? Oh, wow. At first, they were not very supportive. Like, mm -hmm. they were like, what are you going to do? Like, uh, just be a doctor and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now they're, they're so very supportive mm -hmm. because they see the progress and they see how much I love doing it. And I think that changes their mind about uh, business and entrepreneurship. That's really nice. Do you have siblings? I have siblings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they help you with your business? Do you Can you count on them to, uh, I don't know, organize events and things like that? Yeah, yeah. My sister uh, is actually a psychology student. So sometimes I consult. Wow. Uh, that's really them. nice. With... Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and how she helps you with your um, business? Uh, so uh, I did a retreat back uh, back in uh, it's actually early September, mm -hmm. and she helped me with uh, the materials and then uh, prepping the art supply and stuff like that, and also helping oversee the the workshop itself. Oh, the process how how it's handled? Uh, it was great. It was great. It was really good. What is your favorite part about being entrepreneur? Oh, my favorite part is to see my ideas come to life and mm -hmm. see it helps people uh, impact their lives. And I think like, I feel like, oh, wow, uh, I never thought it would actually change people's lives. And it, it, does, it does that. That's really, that's really inspiring to hear. It's just like feeling like uh, you have a purpose and what you do has like a, some kind of benefit for someone else is just really the ultimate gift that you can expect from something that you do and yeah. were you always interested in uh, doing something of your own or did you have maybe another dream job when you were growing up uh i have always wanted to do something of my own mm -hmm. uh but yeah i went to medical school but like it helps me with my uh, formulation journey and my beauty skincare brand so mm -hmm. i guess nothing is ever like a waste of time so no. yeah mm -hmm. yeah but when you were very very little did you had any like I don't know other ideas what you wanted to do like singer like dancer or something more different I I, I dreamt of being a fashion designer mm -hmm. and yeah so it actually aligns so it's I feel like I am being redirected into what I have always dreamt when I was a child. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful. Do you still keep your, uh, how do you call them, <laughs> books with the, with your sketches and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I, I still, yeah. You still have them. I remember when, when I was growing up, I had also, um, you know, Barbie dolls and the magazine. Oh, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And the princesses also, they had like really big dresses. And I used yeah. to sketch them and copy them and design also some dresses. And I always liked that. But when I think about it, that was the only period when I actually did sketching and drawing. So uh, okay. Maybe I should come back to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should try. And sometimes it doesn't have to be like a company or something like that. You just have to uh, lean into that passion for just like maybe one hour a day or something like that. Like your passion and sparks. Yeah, just to get back to something um, you used, that you used to do. Um, now I'm focusing more on coloring, like... Oh, that's nice. Yeah. For adults, you know, those books when you have like the outline and you just, you color uh, yeah, 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 with yeah. whatever you want inside. And that's also kind of therapeutic. Most of my uh, friend dates are like that. We go to the lake, we get our books and we just color. Oh, wow. That is, that is very inspiring and so nice. Yeah. 
Do you have friends that you uh, can share your passions with, like either business friends or just uh, friends from childhood or other periods of your life? Yeah, business friends, because friends from my childhood uh, is actually like uh, didn't really go into business. So mm-hmm. when I talk about business, they don't really relate to that. Yeah. So how did you find your business friends? Uh, through the community uh, threats uh, mm-hmm. is one of the <laughs> my days, yeah <laughs> yeah and, yeah also uh, through my reels through my uh, story Instagram profile and also uh, business competition and stuff like that awesome basically content creation and networking which is amazing yeah that's true do you ever get tired of content by the way like do you ever get tired of interacting online do you ever take a digital de- detox and just disappear or just wanting to recharge for a couple of days, weeks? I did. I did back in like 2018, 2019. I, I rarely post anything and mm-hmm. everybody was like, oh, where is Salsa? Like, where is she going? And stuff like that. But I feel like at the time, I'm not really motivated to do it because I have like mental health issue and stuff. But right mm-hmm. now, I have so much to offer and I feel like I'm very energized to uh, give back to my community mm. do you have some uh, kind of a schedule or habits when it comes to social media or you are chronically online <laughs> I'm chronically online <laughs> okay okay noted <laughs> <laughs> What kind of strategies would you say you use to stay motivated, to keep grinding, to keep posting, to keep interacting with your audience and improving your um, products and services? I think uh, seeing uh, my community, because when I have feedbacks from my community, I can improve what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. And also always stay true to myself, to my core values, because mm-hmm. uh, my big biggest dream is to actually uh, improve Indonesia because Indonesia is still a very uh, developing country and mm-hmm. it needs uh, more empowerment, it needs more uh, innovation and uh, collaboration to make it a better country. And so for that, I need to understand people's behavior and people's from every layer of the uh country not only not only my customer but also mm-hmm. uh, people that maybe cannot uh cannot access my uh services mm-hmm. so you are working on a higher level in terms of social layers that yeah, motivates yeah, you I, the impact yeah yeah i think philanthropy i i am very interested in that too Wow, okay, that sounds really nice. If I am to meet three of your best friends, how would they describe you? Okay, um, I would say mysterious okay. <laughs> and then yeah, uh, creative and maybe curious. Curious, curious, mysterious, creative. Okay, that sounds interesting. Not emotional? Uh, yeah, emotional too, yeah. <laughs> Do you do you have someone helping you out when it comes to your business, like um, either for content creation or for uh, organizing some of your workshops or therapies? I, I know you mentioned uh, your family and siblings helping you sometimes, but do you have like a virtual assistant? Do, have you in, do you have any uh, assistance uh, like from someone who is not in your family? Uh, yeah, I have teams for uh, packing and also social media marketing. Mm-hmm. And uh, also uh, sometimes for community projects. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how did you find them? How did, did you outsource the help? Uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. Yeah. How how did, did it work? Like how What did you do? So I post a job post and... Mm-hmm they apply and I interview them mm-hmm. and actually the uh, participants the the one that applied is very high quality like mm-hmm. it surprised me how they were actually like the head of marketing of a very uh, competent company and uh, a very established company like uh, some brand skincare brand that is very prominent here mm-hmm. and it uh, like 
uh, sometimes I was like, wow, I didn't know they were interested in my my uh, skincare yeah. brand. And, yeah, yeah. And they were interested and wanted to work with me. That's amazing. And how how did you come up with the idea to do it via LinkedIn, not, for example, word of mouth or, I don't know, asking elsewhere? Uh, so I think because uh, LinkedIn has always been uh, like I sometimes see job posts there and I feel like, oh, uh, maybe I can connect with more people there mm -hmm. because when I try uh, just posting posting it in story uh, the result is very limited mm -hmm. and uh, it's not uh, what I hope for so you utilize uh, LinkedIn more than average person <laughs> um, not really but I think yeah <laughs> are you active on it or do you use it when, whenever you feel like I use it whenever I feel like it Mm, okay In interesting what is your favorite uh, social media platform right now favorite social media platform would be tiktok and instagram <laughs> oh okay no trends uh no not really <laughs> why <laughs> because i don't know what to post on trends <laughs> the real struggle the real struggle <laughs> yeah the real struggle i was like i'm confused like what to say <laughs> yeah i think uh every everyone who likes to be part of the conversation like me i love commenting on everybody's posts like i know them for years but when oh, it comes so... to actually posting something i'm like what i'm supposed to say like <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> but i think on threads it's um so fresh and so new that anything goes at the moment and mm -hmm. i think by posting your journey and just sharing the same things you share on your stories for example it can really go a long way as well and i think people like visual journeys there as well so maybe you can give it a... well try, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> i i was thinking about that too but yeah maybe and... i'll try to they also have the poll option, so you can say, oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. for example, on a picture of yours, you can say, what do you see, a rabbit yeah. or a horse? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that can be a really interesting way to just use the platform to the maximum. If someone wants to start a, multiple businesses like you, what would be the three advices would you give them or even better, yourself? Now that you know what you know, oh, what, okay. what would you say? Wow. Okay, first, trust your instinct because um, sometimes there are a lot of options in business. Like, would you scale more or would you like start small or would you uh, like the pricing higher or, or uh, slower? I think there's a lot of uh, like um, options on that. But mm -hmm. I think trust yourself because even if it doesn't um, turn out well, mm -hmm. uh, it will, uh, teaches you something about yourself, your uh, the the customer, your own market uh, landscape, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the second would be, I think when you do your business activities, like let's say, but doing workshops or bazaar, uh, I think. Uh, don't think will I make money or not because okay. I think money is very very uh, unpredictable like uh, you can get money from uh, a lot of sources and uh, sometimes influencer like one time thing and then it blow up and then it goes viral like you don't know at that yeah. but uh, treat those business activity as a way to learn as a way to try something new mm -hmm. and to test your ideas and uh, test your intuition mm -hmm. and the third would be don't compare your journey with others because sometimes uh, you feel like oh I'm uh, already one year but like I'm not really growing that well because mm -hmm. other business have it like more successful because your journey is your journey and I think everything happens at the perfect time at the right time
Amazing. That's the these advices are top notch. <laughs> really, really good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Especially the second one, not tying the outcome of your workshop or your project or collaboration to the money only, but That's rather nice. than the journey in what you're gonna learn. And I think this is where successful and unsuccessful entrepreneurs are missing the documentation part and enjoying that journey and being present yes. in that period from A to B, for example. So I think it's a great reminder that you mentioned that. <laughs> Your first job experience, like, can you tell me, um, have you ever worked anything before, uh, like for a paycheck in corporate or business or medical? I actually never have a job before. <laughs> I, yeah, so I have, uh, I studied abroad for my master's degree in neuroscience. Mm -hmm. And I actually do business also, like I sell my secondhand vintage uh, clothing. So I always do business in my site. I never have a job. <laughs> oh, wow okay <laughs> so it's basically you are born with it there is no <laughs> I, I think so that's really uh, fascinating and where did you study neuroscience uh in the UK uh, in Newcastle wow and how was that experience for you there oh it was so fun it was so great <laughs> it was one of, the, one of the best uh year of my life is was it only for one year or more than that uh, it's one year one year okay would you ever go back yeah yeah I would I wanted to do a PhD there actually mm. in London but... <laughs> okay let me know if you go because London Zagreb is not that far <laughs> oh, yeah yeah sure of course yeah. <laughs> Indonesia is kind of far but one yeah. day <laughs> One day when I go to Asia, I will just hop on on a plane from Korea, let's say, and then come to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, do you remember your first ever sale and what was it? And who was your oh, first wow. client? <laughs> that in was my good. business or like in life? Let's start life and then business. Okay. Life would be when I was like a child in elementary school. Mm -hmm. My my grandmother would uh, bring me lunch for school mm -hmm. and sometimes I don't want to eat them like I don't like the food and then I sell it to my friends <laughs> and, and did you buy something else with the cash or did you just keep it keep the money yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't keep the money. <laughs> that's fascinating and in your business do you remember your first client and your first project my first client would be so I do uh paint personality painting. So mm -hmm. when I see people, I can see their personality and through intuition, like what what, what are they like, and mm -hmm. then I translate it into an abstract painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it it is my friend. My my client is my friend, and uh, I'm so happy to paint her in a painting in an abstract painting. <gasps> That's so cool! I really want to see the painting now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh as you can see here uh, yeah my room is full with paintings actually. yes yes <laughs> um what would you say then was like um the experience working with your friend was it hard was it difficult was it uh, actually very easy to work with her how did you what did you learn from that experience I think sometimes I have a really high expectation of my work. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid like it will disappoint her or it will make her feel like, oh, I don't really like this, like that. But actually uh, to trust myself more is the lessons that I learned uh, because at the end of the day, they always have um, a good impression of it. Even though sometimes like, let's say it's abstract and the, the color is very dark or very bright mm -hmm. and usually correlates it relates to the person that I am painting so mm -hmm. yeah I like trust myself and like that's okay if they don't like it like it's okay <laughs> do you do they ever ask you like what the, what does it mean how how was your process do you offer something else beside the the painting yeah so I give them a description like mm -hmm. let's say um like let's say this painting here yeah 
And uh, like, let's say there's red, there's uh, purple, there's uh, black, and uh, every color has its own meaning. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say purple is meaning like higher intuition and also a higher uh, awareness of themselves. And uh, red means they're passionate about their life and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's really nice so they can get closer to the art itself yeah yeah that's fascinating if you i know i'm not your friend and not your client but uh, if oh you... you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> online bestie but if, <laughs> if you have to start a picture abstract of course of, of me what would you use okay so first i would feel your aura mm -hmm. like how how do you feel to me so mm -hmm. I feel like you're a very warm and inviting person like mm -hmm. uh, someone that has uh, an energetic pull towards people but also uh, you have your own uh, anchor to yourself so mm -hmm. I think a balance between that would be like let's say a green and a blue color so green would be like grounding but blue would be like a calm and also uh something that uh, invites people to become like a community or something that like moves through the water or something like that wow interesting <laughs> interesting okay <laughs> never associated blue and green with myself but it sounds really oh wow okay <laughs> really, really uh, interesting to see from your perception how that might look like what are your professional goals for the next i don't know two years maybe okay so uh for my clothing line i have been accepted in the world trade center in new york uh in the canvas new york so yeah i'm working on uh delivering my my clothes there mm -hmm. and i wanted to expand internationally so maybe we could like partner to have like my clothes in zagreb or something like that <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Let's put it on the goals list because... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, okay. We, you yeah, have so, good points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and also I wanted to make a digital product that uh, have like my wisdom and my teaching on it so mm -hmm. I can sell it on international platform like Amazon mm -hmm. or on like Instagram ads, something like that. So mm -hmm. I can... Uh, because I feel like Indonesian people needs inspiration. Like they, uh, when people like younger people, when they wanted to go to arts, when we, when they go to, when they wanted to go to business, mm -hmm. they always see like, are there any role models in the bis in the area? And when they cannot uh, associate themselves with uh, people that looks like them in mm -hmm. the business area or in the creative area, they are very hesitant to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to to like inspire them to like give them like a, an example that you can uh, expand to international market and you can uh, make it in the big cities in the world uh, spread your creative creativity and also arts that's amazing would you say that will be some sort of a book or maybe some visual diary like what what do, what are you thinking about the digital product do you have any ideas it's like courses and also books. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And do you have a mentor when you start, when you started in right now? Do you have someone you look up to and someone that you like get inspired by? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a spiritual mentor mm -hmm. and also a business mentor. And they help me to navigate my business and also my personal life. Mm, that's amazing. How did you meet them online as well or... I'm, yeah. <laughs> Chronically online <laughs> pays off, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share some useful habits or skills you have outside of your work, but also helped you with work? Outside of work, <laughs> I'm very like <laughs> uh, surrounded by work all the time, so it's kind of hard. Uh, I think uh, gardening. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, because I think when you grow a plant or uh, going into nature you learn a lot because it's very hard to grow something mm -hmm. but uh, one thing that I learned from gardening is that when you grow a flower when and when that flower didn't grow you didn't blame the flower 
but you blame the circumstances or the environment and it's same like us like if we didn't grow maybe it's not our fault but maybe there's toxic environment or like mm. we needed to go to somewhere that is more uh appreciative of us something like that oh we got really, <laughs> we got really deep into that oh my god okay okay that's that's a really really good example of exactly that question okay thank you thank you <laughs> Sure. <laughs> if you can travel like time travel this time anywhere at any time like euro uh -huh. period where would you go and why there and why then okay okay so i think i would go to a period where plato and aristotle exist mm -hmm. and i would ask them like philosophy stuff and why do they think about uh, their thoughts and i think they influence most of uh the influential people in the, the world so mm -hmm. i think i want to ask them questions like um why democracy is something like this and like that <laughs> okay yeah. so basically you have coffee chats with plato and <laughs> other <laughs> philosophers <laughs> interesting interesting um do you have um for example any favorite books that you would like to recommend to someone who is um, doing something similar like you okay so i would recommend big magic by elizabeth gilbert okay. so it's actually uh elizabeth gilbert is the one if is the one who wrote uh it pray love if you have ever heard like julia roberts one yes uh, i saw the movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she in big magic she told us about how to follow the courageous our the courageous self which are within us mm -hmm. to embark on this self-exploratory journey on self-love self-care and also creativity and to follow our intuition mm, that's it that's that's going to my bucket list of so to <laughs> read next <laughs> do you read anything at the moment what are you um going through uh i'm reading tom lake by ann patchett it's uh it's a fiction story about like uh a young love lust love like something like that oh interesting okay <laughs> <laughs> um do you have anything like a favorite meal or dish that you like it's your comfort food and you loved eating yeah, it's fried rice. <laughs> I really <laughs> like fried rice. Uh, because in Indonesia, it's called nasi goreng. Mm. And uh, it, it's uh, very comforting because, I don't know, rice is very, <laughs> very, very nice to eat. I agree. I think uh, I started watching all the Uncle Roger all oh, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i'm <laughs> expert in uh, egg fried rice <laughs> uh, yeah but i really want to learn how to make crispy rice you know the one that when you fry it so much that it gets so crispy almost like a cracker you know Crunchy. Oh, all right yeah i never heard of that okay 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 maybe i'll i'll try to see that <laughs> That's really interesting that uh, you like uh, fried rice. Do you add something that is non-traditional for a uh, fried rice recipe, but you love it? Oh, sometimes I, I, I sometimes cook. And what I love to add to my dishes are mm. honey because, <laughs> because it adds like this like sweet, but not too sweet, but like a very like exotic feeling to that. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Okay. Now 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 it's getting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Can you name something on your bucket list that you really want to do like in, like in your life? It doesn't have to be in 5 years, but in your life. Okay. I want to go um skydiving, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh something <laughs> like that to invoke my adrenaline uh, mm -hmm. because sometimes I'm very scared but I wanted to move out of my comfort zone to do something that I haven't tried before okay is it something on a smaller scale that you're doing right now uh right now I haven't tried some sport like that mm -hmm. but I want to try it 
<laughs> so <laughs> okay okay um do you play any other instruments other than the guitar yeah i play piano and uh when i was in junior high i played trumpet mm, okay that's interesting was it your uh, parents choice or did you choose the instruments yourself i choose my intro the, the instruments myself oh that's so cool does anybody <laughs> in your family also play any other instruments uh my mom plays piano oh okay so you you studied with her probably when you were growing up yeah yeah sometimes that's so cool and what do you want to be remembered for oh okay <laughs> i wanted to be remembered for uh, my impact towards other because i have um learned that uh, maya angelou once said that people won't Uh, remember you for what you said or what you uh, accomplished but they uh, will remember for how they make you feel how mm -hmm. they make them feel. so uh, I wanted them to feel they are uh, appreciated loved and uh, impacted by my uh, products and also my mental health journey too That's amazing. That's really good. Um, this last one that was from one of our audience because they were okay. like, okay, that sounds interesting. Can I learn more about this? <laughs> so the question okay. is, how do you manage all your businesses? How do you prioritize them? And what kind of scale meter do you use to prioritize them? Like, is it income? Is it the passion you have for each individual business? or other okay so how do i manage it is i work through flow so let's say today i'm gonna work on my uh, social media management so uh for all of them i would like do it do social media for all of them and then let's say tomorrow i'm gonna do innovation so i'm gonna do innovation for all of them mm -hmm. so it's more like uh, the flow so i don't really jump out of uh one one another so like it will messes up my um thinking processes okay and then for the what's the second question sorry the second question was how do you prioritize them is it by passion income or other okay so how i prioritize them is um first uh, i have three uh like three parameters for that Uh, the first is uh, authenticity, mm -hmm. uh, where I feel like I can be most most authentic mm -hmm. to myself and others. And then uh, connection, where I can make the most connection with others. Because mm -hmm. I feel like uh, when you earn uh, quite a, uh, quite uh, income, you feel like, oh, okay, uh, that's another day, another same uh, exact thing. Like, you don't really grow. Mm -hmm. But when you uh, prioritize connection, um, you feel like, oh, I've, I made an impact towards someone's life. And every day is different because uh, uh, people has their own struggles, their own journey, their own story to tell. And I think that what keeps me motivated. And the third would be creativity. Mm -hmm. So how I can... Uh, be the most creative uh, but also the income uh, the profits uh, has also needs to be balanced uh, mm -hmm. so we pay attention to cash flows and uh, to uh, incoming incomes yeah <laughs> that's nice do you use an accountant or do you do your books yourself uh, there's a uh, application for that uh, mm -hmm. it's called my Mm -hmm. so so you use uh, a tool for uh, all the bookkeeping <laughs> that's nice yeah yeah because it's it's very uh confusing <laughs> yeah sometimes. yeah yeah did you ever encounter any uh, mishaps or mistakes having four businesses and having four different types of clients or services yeah yeah i I did <laughs> at the beginning i was very confused and sometimes i didn't uh keep track of how much i um sell that day or like usually at one day i can be in uh like two or three bazaars and like i cannot keep track of them because uh miscommunication but right now i think i'm 
uh, streamlining the process itself. So with practice, you learned how to separate the different uh, businesses and how yeah, to yeah. streamline them. That's nice. That's nice. And uh, last but not least, your business card, where people can find you, where do you connect the most with uh, your audience? Okay, so you can find me on Instagram. You can always, uh, my DM are always uh, open if you mm -hmm. want to ask, if you want maybe uh, mentoring mm -hmm. or uh, you can just uh, DM me there. Uh, my Instagram is Salsa Nadif. I will add it here as a name tag. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And that's it. We can say bye now to our audience. <laughs> okay, bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>